We're welcoming back onto the program today Chris Cluey, former NFL football player who played eight seasons with the Minnesota Vikings, lifelong gamer, provocateur at large, as he describes himself, and Mercedes Carrera, adult film actress, engineer, gamer, and free speech advocate. You know, I think the sort of obvious first question is, let's see if we can figure out what each of you thinks that Gamergate, the Gamergate movement is really about. Chris, I'll go to you first. Sure. Well, in uh, in my view, uh, based on all the factual evidence that I've seen, the Gamergate movement is a um, essentially quest uh, set forth by Aaron Iran Gujoni um, to humiliate uh, Zoe Quinn, who was his ex, and it uh, he shopped his his rage story around to a couple different forums. Um, eventually, got picked up on uh, on 4chan, then later moved to 8chan, and you had a, a bunch of people. Uh, primarily Chan members orchestrating this behind the scenes, um, which can be seen in the IRC logs that Zoe collected over the, the span of about a month or so, that this originally started as a way to humiliate her. And then um, later, after they were getting pushback, uh, they started the operation Not Your Shield um, in an effort to make it seem like um, the movement was about more than just harassing a woman. And then once uh, Adam Baldwin saw the YouTube video by, I believe it was Mundane Matt, he coined the term Gamergate, which people kind of glommed onto because Adam has a lot of followers. But at its core, the movement still remains a way for people to harass women, which is really unfortunate because I think that no one who opposes Gamergate has a problem with the idea of ethics in journalism. That's, that's a goal everyone should aspire to. Our problem is that the means somehow seem to be more about harassing people than they do about actually seeking ethics in journalism. So that's, that's how I view Gamergate, and I believe it's how a large majority of the world views Gamergate. Okay, so Mercedes, Chris gave us about a minute and a half sort of overview of how he views Gamergate. I'll go to you and, and feel free to either tell us whether you agree or disagree in general with what he's saying, but feel free also if you disagree with specific assertions he made on the facts, it would be great to know that from you as well. Okay, great. So my perception of Gamergate, uh, given the information that I have and that I've observed online, is it actually has is a movement that was in the making for years. And the hashtag itself and the origination of it indeed did start with the Aaron post. And I think that that's something that a lot of people can agree on. Um, and I'm not disputing that Zo Quinn received harassment for that. However, if we go back to the ethics and gaming journalism assertion, what you find is Actually, this is a conversation that's been had for a while. That post shed light on collusion or alleged collusion between Zoquin, a developer, and journalists. And that's why gamers started to really get angry about this. And if you if you go forward in the timeline, you know, on there's so many different parts of this movement. Unfortunately, um, instead of being responsible, and the, dev the uh, journalist could have been responsible or perhaps looked into the allegations of collusion. Instead, it was easier to offload that, smear that, and say, well, it's actually about harassing women. Um, and I think that that's where a lot of Gamergate-affiliated uh, people started to say, well, no, that's not what this is about. Actually, the hashtag started as a result of, here's a post that... Um, you know, in some ways proves that, yes, there was there was a collusion happening. And, and that's the origination of it. I don't agree with the idea that Gamergate is a movement to harass women. Um, I've been very involved in it. Nobody has harassed me just for being a woman. And that's the reason I got involved in looking into it to begin with. I was observing it from the outside as a woman who's been in tech and what I heard of it at first was this is about harassing women. And when I looked a little deeper, I just found that wasn't true. So let's, let's, let me, so we can establish some facts. Chris, I would actually you, like to raise a couple points there. I will absolutely let you, but just, and before sure. we do that, um, do you believe, Chris, that there is a concern about ethics and journalism from those who claim to have that concern? I'll let you answer that first. And then second to Mercedes, do you admit that there has been harassment of women, as Chris asserts, aside from whether you personally have been the victim of it? So, Chris, first, do you believe that there is a concern around ethics and journalism? 
Yes, I do believe there are people in Gamergate uh, who are concerned about ethics in journalism. I think that number is growing smaller every day as they see what the core of the movement is about. And I think that there is no problem with having a concern about ethics in video game journalism. I think there there should be discussion about ethics in video game journalism. Okay, no, that's However, good. And, that, that, and I'm going to let you respond. But before you, you, you rebut what Mercedes said, and Mercedes, do you also agree that there is... Uh, 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 an aspect of this that is involved in harassing women, as Chris asserts. I think that that definitely happened, especially in the beginning. Absolutely. And I actually, you know, did some digging on that before this, and I have the numbers on that. So Okay, and so we, we'll get to that. Chris, let me open it back up to you. Mercedes made a number of different assertions there, and certainly you should be allowed to respond. So I think the first assertion that is troubling is the um, the idea that there was the idea of collusion inside the uh, the Zoe post that Iran Gajoni posted, and the actual factual matter of that is that those claims were investigated and it was found that nothing had happened. There was no big write up of Depression Quest by Nathan Grayson. That didn't happen. He mentioned it once because it was a game at an indie gay jam, at an indie game jam, and then there was no other mention of it. So the idea that this thing was because of collusion, well, the facts aren't there to back it up. There, the other idea that Gamergate started with was Zoe Quinn slept with five guys in order to get her game reviewed. That's why their IRC channel was called Burger and Fries. It was a reference to five guys. Again, no factual basis for that whatsoever. The only reason it existed was to harass Zoe Quinn and to make her feel horrible about herself. So I, I find it troubling that there's this thought that Gamergate somehow had this noble purpose that arose from the Zoe post when all along the facts are there. It was completely about harassing Zoe Quinn, and it still is about harassing Zoe Quinn. Uh, Mike Cernovich just the other day posted harassment of Zoe Quinn. Milo Yiannopoulos just the other day posted harassment of Zoe Quinn. You can shake your head all you want, but the facts are right there online. So and Mercedes, many people so have seen them. That's a specific thing. Do you the two instances there, Milo Yiannopoulos and Mike Cernovich that that Chris is talking about? Do you reject that those took place? Do you or do you just uh, maybe have a different characterization of what entails harassment? <laughs> There are several things that are that are going on here. Um, what I've noticed is in the anti-Gamergate camp, the definition of harassment tends to be a moving goalpost. So, for example, my first uh, experience of Chris Cluey here was actually him dogpiling me with Sarah Butts, attempting to have me targeted by a notorious online troll board. Now, that could be I defined as harassment. And, can, and, and that's the truth. Can I respond to that? You'll get, let, let's let Mercedes sure. at least finish what the claim is. Okay, so you're yeah. actually saying... You think so. The one thing I do want to clarify, though, is earlier you said you had not been the victim of harassment, but you're saying that you think Chris Cluey may have actually encouraged harassment of you. Yeah, I, I didn't say that I hadn't been. Here, let me rephrase this. I have been harassed online, largely as a result of being a porn actress, and that's a given. And anti Gamergate and Chris Cluey in particular, with a notorious online troll. And this is a whole, you know, backstory, and I've documented this. My first experience of Chris Cluey was actually him dogpiling me with this notorious online troll. Now, this troll had a conflict with this troll board on the 8chan boards. Now, I don't visit 8chan. I don't go on 8chan very regularly. I've been on there four or five times in my life. Um, and they actually attempted to have me targeted by this board. And they wanted me to speak out on this unrelated board. It had nothing to do with Gamergate whatsoever. And quite frankly, if you look at it, that's a setup. And that's harassment. And that's the truth of it. In regards to Zoe Quinn, I think most of Gamergate wants that whole thing to go away. Okay, Nobody so wants let's, to let's talk put about a, Zoe Quinn. Let's pause the Zoe Quinn part mm -hmm. just for a second, since now mm -hmm. we're getting into some other specific stuff. So, Chris, definitely you should address how, however you view what Mercedes is referring to with this uh, incitement to dogpile. Yep, I have the tweets right here. Um, it was on January 5th. Uh, Sarah Nyberg, otherwise known as SRH Butts, on, uh, on Twitter, she does a great job compiling the things that Gamergate says in their own words and then rebroadcast them so people can see exactly what Gamergate is. I believe Merce Mercedes has referred to her as a troll. Uh, that's not actually trolling. That's just showing people who other people are. Um, so anyways, um, Sarah Butts tweeted, at the Mercedes XXX uh, with a dot. So this this could be considered dogpiling because it was a dot reply. It was not an at reply. Sarah Nyberg tweeted, if you're really against harassment in GG, use your influence to get Baphomet off of 8chan. It's endangering lives. 
I responded to you with a at reply, not a dot reply. That's not dogpiling. That's speaking to someone. The only people who can see that are people who follow both you and me. I'm willing to bet that's a pretty small group of people. I responded with, I will second this call. Prove Baphomet and GG aren't connected. Call for their removal. Lots of GG follow you. You are a, vo a voice and a face of Gamergate. And this, as you say, Gamergate is against harassment. Gamergate is not about harassment. So when this board, Baphomet, starts targeting GG targets, and then all of a sudden they start exposing people's personal information, mine included, um, I think it's a perfectly legitimate thing to say to Gamergate, if they are truly against harassment, to denounce a board that is targeting people that, oddly enough, 90% of which oppose Gamergate. Okay, I, okay so I, Chris, that's too much if, to ask. It, in order to try to keep us all at least working with the same information, Mm -hmm. Is Mercedes, is the tweet that Chris just referred to the tweet you were also referring to when you talked about the attempt to dogpile or is there something else you were referring to? There's that information and later on in that thread, there's also, there are additional tweets. Now, context uh, on this. Well, hold on a second, Chris. Hold on, Chris. Hold on. Let's let Mercedes yep. speak. Context on this is that Sarah Nyberg, if you look her up in the history on her, this is a person who is an online troll, is a notorious online troll, um, was upset with Baphomet because they exposed her online conversations that included conversations about pedophilia, about bestiality. And by um, the way, I'm that, going to, excuse I'm me, gonna interrupt let me, that. let me Well, talk. hold on, Chris, let's I, at least, you know, Mercedes has not interrupted you. And I, I, know, I understand the desire when you feel mm -hmm. someone saying something yep, wrong no, to jump free. in, but let's let her finish. Okay, feel free. Thank you. Um, so this person, is an online troll. Now, Baphomet is a board, is a troll board, and and they attack people for the lulls. It's not a Gamergate board. That's like saying to, to say to me, prove that Baphomet is not related to Gamergate is like saying prove that the KKK isn't related to the Republican Party. That it's it's an absurd assertion, and. The reality is that Sarah and Chris both knew this, and they also knew that anyone who calls for Baphomet's destruction is now put in, in the target zone of that board. I don't go to 8chan. I, it is completely out of my control. It's like saying, Mercedes, go make the Supreme Court do something. This has nothing to do with me, and it had nothing to do with Gamergate, and they knew that. And this is why it's so interesting that there's constant assertion by anti-Gamergate that they stand against harassment when every experience I've had with anti-Gamergate thus far has been them either dogpiling or attempting to harass, and that's the truth. All right, Chris, we'll let you respond to that, and then I think we'll be able to, I don't know how much further we'll be able to get on this, we can transition into our next topic. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, so what would you say then that the owner of the Baphomet board was a Gamergate supporter, as proved by his own Facebook page. Again, I am not on 8chan, and I don't know this. And by the way, Baphomet targeted Lizzie, who is a Gamergate supporter, and a bunch of Gamergate supporters. And you want to talk about doxing Zoe No, Quinn. no, I asked you a single uh, question. Uh, I excuse didn't, I didn't me. Ask you to keep Let going. me finish the question. Thank that you. wasn't the question, though. Well, hold on, guys. Let's, we don't. We, <laughs> have, plenty we that, have plenty that of time. We have plenty of time. We have plenty of time here. Uh, if Mercedes doesn't want to answer that question, then certainly that can that can be interpreted by the audience as a non-answer, if that's indeed what it is. Sure. It's 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 not a non-answer. That's information that I was not aware of. Again, I don't visit 8chan. And when we're on the topic of doxing, again, Chris is is glossing over the fact that Zoe Quinn doxed Mike Cernovich. Oh, 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 let's hold on a second there, because you'll need to provide some facts on that one. Well, that's I actually that is actually our next topic. So let's okay, let me so, if so I let's, can let's put that aside for a little. Let bit, me then. recontextualize now, because that is the the next thing I want to get to. Which no, is, hold on, D David, David, though, I, I, there there are some other things that I would like to bring up since we are on currently on the eight chan Baphomet topic, and one of those is that. Mercedes, you say you don't visit 8chan, you don't know what goes on there, but the bulk of Gamergate activity happens on the 8chan Gamergate board. How do you feel comfortable supporting a movement that you have no idea what their goals are through your own willful ignorance? How, how does that make sense? Again, prove that all of Gamergate's activities happen on 8chan. Gamergate is a hashtag. It is not a group. It is not a club. It is not a movement. It is a consumer revolt, and it is a hashtag, and that's the truth of it. And you can laugh in an attempt to try to dismiss my answers to you, 
But quite frankly, it just makes you look foolish, not me. Well, sure, uh, you're uh, the one who called it a movement. You called it a movement five minutes ago. I don't know that this sort of line is necessarily going to illuminate some of some of the, the other things I want to discuss, which I think both of you actually would be able to shed a lot of light on. And, and what I, I think we were starting to transition into is both sides of Gamergate, for, for lack of a, a, some other way to describe it, have used and implemented different methods to sort of uh, pursue the goals they find important. And whether we're talking about harassment or not, whether we're talking about ethics, whether we're talking about monitoring and sort of retweeting to expose what may be uh, 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 instances of something that one side wants to illuminate, there's no question that doxing has been an element of this. And I'm curious, first, I'll go to Mercedes on this one since we started with Chris on the last one. When we talk about doxing, in your view, knowing that, of course, you're on one side of this and Chris is on the other, have both sides resorted to doxing it sort of in a 50-50 way, or has one side used doxing more often than the other, Mercedes? You know, I wouldn't be able to give you the statistical number on that, but I would say Just absolutely. Just your impression. My impression is that absolutely both, si both sides, as well as people utilizing the hashtag or usually utilizing the anti-hashtag on both sides, have doxed. Absolutely. And, and, and this, is, this is where I find it to be interesting that a lot of the hardline anti-gamergators have it that gamergate bad and anti-gamergate good and nothing in between. I'm the first to tell you, absolutely, there have been people on both sides. And I think Liana Kay said it best on your show, which is that there have been people who've been hurt on both sides. That's true. Okay. And let's for a second decouple sort of whether one side is good or bad with regard to its goals and just focus in on the doxing part of, of it. Chris, if I were to say to you, if you're supposed to, you know, sort of on balance going to tell us the doxing has been 50-50 or it's been 60-40 or what have you, talk to us a little bit about your view on that. I'd say it's an impossible question to answer because there isn't two sides. There's Gamergate and there's everyone else in the world. And everyone else in the world doesn't fall into one side. There are people who oppose Gamergate who use methods I don't agree with. I've said so. There are people who oppose Gamergate whose methods I do agree with. I've said so. I don't think doxing is an appropriate tactic. I've seen far more Gamergate happening to people who oppose Gamergate than doxing has happened to people who support Gamergate. So I would say that Gamergaters tend to dox a lot more than the people who oppose them, again, who aren't necessarily a side. They are just people elsewhere in the world who see something happening and say, we don't think that is okay, that people are getting harassed. Mercedes, you don't think so? I, I, don't, I, I don't agree with the assertion that there's Gamergate and everyone else. There's absolutely, I think, even more of an organized effort, if you will, that opposes <laughs> We're Gamergate. We're conspiracy theories, yes. I was waiting for it. Go on. Well, let's not, I, I, let's, let's not, I mean, let's, ex let's hear what she's saying first okay. before we call it a conspiracy theory. Go ahead, Mercedes. You know, and, and it's this kind of condescension that makes it really difficult to talk to people who consider themselves to be anti-gamergators. They, there's a, a Reddit group. There's a there's an anti-gamergate Reddit group. There's there's a group that all follows each other that created block bots and more block bots. It, it's I mean, <laughs> the information is right there. You can laugh all you want, Chris, but it's right there. And quite frankly, and I've been saying this lately, if the anti-gamergate effort wasn't so concerted in, in, in their efforts to bring down what they perceived to be Gamergate. A lot of this would have calmed down. We had anti-Gamergate, somebody over in that camp, and if, in a, if it were truly is Gamergate in the rest of the world, then we can say that it's the rest of the world anti-Gamergate, called in a bomb threat to a Gamergate meetup in, in DC last week. I, I mean, this is absurd. Chris, so, so let, let me let you address that. Is there, is there, is there an anti-Gamergate or is there just everybody who's not in Gamergate? Well, if the New York Times, Ars Technica, um, Kotaku, Game Informer, Polygon, um, who else, Mother Jones, The Daily Coast, uh, a wide variety of other websites, if they've all written articles illustrating the problems with Gamergate and why it is harassment of people, I'm going to say that that conspiracy has a whole lot of members. I mean, there there's a lot of people. Or, you know, it could be reptoids. We don't know. They could be pulling our strings behind the curtains. I mean, that's that's one thing Gamergate's never short of is the, uh, the red line conspiracy charts. I've seen more than a few of those. One topic that both of you in your own ways told me in the week leading up to this uh, conversation you wanted to discuss 
relates to gender and Gamergate. And Mercedes suggested that we talk about the allegations that Gamergate is anti-woman, allegations that I, I presume and having talked to Mercedes in the past, she disagrees with. And Chris also wanted to talk about the connection between gender and Gamergate in what he feels is an overlap between anti-feminist and men's rights activist groups with the pro Gamergate side. Let's go back first to Chris this time. Talk to us about why you believe this overlap exists. Uh, I believe the overlap exists because you look at the people who are attracted to Gamergate and who Gamergate holds up as voices, and a vast majority of them are men's rights activists or people who have a vested interest in speaking out against feminism. Um, Mike Cernovich, for example, men's rights activist. Uh, Rouge V, men's rights activist. Vox Day, men's rights activist and horrible human being. Um, there, there are plenty more examples of people. I mean, you had Stormfront. You had the literal Nazi party wanting to ally itself with Gamergate because they liked what they saw. And, there, and there's something to be said about if your movement is defined by all these people wanting to join up and they all share these similar traits, traits that really don't treat other people well, that says something about your movement and what its espoused values are. You know, no matter what you think they are, people judge things based on their actions. And Gamergate's actions have attracted a very specific sort of person. And before we let Mercedes respond, just so we make it kind of comprehensive, what specific actions do you believe have attracted these groups? Uh, I think their, over, their, their willingness to go after who they perceive as an SJW, social justice warrior, which used to be just someone that was a keyboard warrior who would get upset at a cause but then never do anything about it, but has now grown to encompass basically everything um, that, gave, that MRAs and PUAs don't, don't like. Um, I, think, uh, I think it's interesting that Gamergate doesn't want to take its activism offline. It doesn't want to, you know, this meetup was the, the first thing. And I will agree with you, the bomb threat was completely unconscionable. That's something that should never happen. Um, but I think it's interesting, that was the first time Gamergate met up in any meaningful capacity when that's that's the main complaint against SJWs is that they never do anything offline. They never take any strides. And so I, I, I really feel that Gamergate's history of harassing people and of providing this willful ignorance about how their actions are perceived, it, it makes for some very fertile recruiting ground for people who generally don't have everyone else's best interests in mind. All right, so Mercedes, there's a lot there. If you want, I can just kind of open the floor to you, but there's a yeah, few things if you'll allow me to kind of walk through to get your take on them. One, do you agree that this overlap exists between anti-feminists, men's rights activists, and Gamergate? Is that, is, to, at, the, at the core level, do you believe that that exists? I believe that when the radical feminists, and I want to word this carefully because I, you can call me a men's rights activist and you could also call me a women's rights activist. All right. So I want to be very clear on that. Um, when radical feminists began to co-opt the hashtag as a way to prove that they were being harassed online. And there's a lot of history there that I won't have time to get into right now. But um, the Anita Sarkeesians of the world, Brianna Wu, et cetera, et cetera. What you had was that happened. And then we talked about on the last show, there was a vacuum. Now, the, there was an existing war between the radical feminists. And I want to say radical, not regular feminists. There are a lot of really great feminists in the world. Radical feminists and the men's rights and the anti-feminist groups. So that was existing. And then Gamergate happened, and then that war continued within that, those grounds. Now, the interesting assertion is this idea that Gamergate is a, is a right or a far-right movement. Well, actually, they did polls on Gamergate, and they found most people are leftists. And, and I, you know, you can laugh all you want, Chris, but there are polls and there's data there. Right, and, and my experience, with, please don't interrupt me, my experience within it is because I interact with a lot of people who are part of Gamergate is most of them are actually leftists. And so my experience with it is there's the authoritarian left and then there's the more classical libertarian left. And that's really the battleground. Now, is that to say that there weren't like men's rights activists or extreme men's rights groups who saw Gamergate as a grounds that they could kind of utilize to um, 
continue their existing war? Absolutely. I think that totally happened. And that was part of the scope creep that Liana and I spoke about on our last interview with you. Okay, so then the the next part, which is what you wanted to discuss when you talked about, hey, David, let's talk about gender and Gamergate is you wanted to address allegations that aside from the 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 sort of overlap of men's rights activists with Gamergate or not, the allegation that Gamergate is anti woman, you wanted to ta tackle that directly. So let me allow you to do that. Right. So part of the reason I got involved in this is having been a woman who worked in tech for seven years, when I heard about Gamergate, I, I heard and I read all the mainstream stories about this is a terrible hate movement, et cetera, et cetera. So I read those stories. Well, I also noticed that there were discrepancies within them. So I dug a little deeper. And as a woman who's worked in tech, I'm not unfamiliar with these issues. So as I started to ask questions, what I found was that the Gamergate side, the people who were communicating under that hashtag, were more than happy to give me information, to explain what was going on, and they really did it in a very gender neutral way. Anti-Gamergate, on the other hand, immediately attacked me for even asking the questions and then promptly put me on the block bot. And to me, that was really indicative of where these sides of people stood. My experience within Gamergate is not that they are anti-woman. And quite frankly, given my current profession, if they were going to be misogynists against anybody, it would be me. And they haven't been. Quite frankly, if anything, they've been very open and willing to hear, to hear my voice. Hmm. Not just objectification, you know, and that's a common anti-gamergate is oh, they just like you because objectification and porn, et cetera. No, actually, actually, this is a group of people who said, we want to hear what you have to say about this. And there are tons of women on the Gamergate side. There are so many women. I noticed that Chris chose not to talk about uh, Chloe and, and base mom, Christina Hoff Summers, and Shu on Head and all these other these female gamer gators, and, and, and this is an inconvenient truth that they don't like to address because they would rather continue the narrative that everybody who supported Gamergate fit this standard profile that they how, how's created. That, how's that sounding to you, Chris? Um, not quite matching up with reality because uh, Christina Hoff Summers, since you brought her up, um, she calls herself an equity feminist and she has been widely denounced by 99% of other feminists as not knowing what the hell she's talking about. I mean, she, she has her cushy job at, at the Heritage Foundation and, you know, or the, yeah, I think it's the Heritage Foundation where she gets to be the, the talking head that lets people think that their ideas aren't that bad. Very similar to what you're doing right now with Gamergate in that, yes, of course they're welcoming you with open arms. You're approving of what they're doing. You're a very useful shield for them to hide behind. They can point to Mercedes and say, look, we're not all horrible people. We don't all dox. But in the background, you have the same channers doing the same things they've been doing for the last nine months, and August never ends. So it, it really strikes me as curious that you say you know all this stuff about Gamergate, yet earlier you said, I never visit 8chan. I don't know what goes on there. I have no idea what's happening on 8chan. Th those were your exact words. Mm -hmm. So if you say that, and then you also tell me, I know all there is to know about Gamergate, and it's not actually this. You know, there, there's plenty of women. They treat us well. I find that to be a discrepancy. Is that a discrepancy, Mercedes, or is there an explanation? <laughs> well, it, you know, Chris is mischaracterizing my words. So I never said I never visit 8chan, I said rarely. Yeah, you said like four or five times, I think. Right, okay. so there's that. Also, not all Gamergate activity happens on 8chan. There's Twitter, there's Reddit. And by the way, part of the reason I don't need to visit it is people give me information. And not to mention that Gamergate has at this point created its own news outlets and places to talk about these things. Plus, I'm friends with neutral reporters such as Liana Kay. So I get a lot of the both sides on that. Also, I never claim to know everything there is to know about Gamergate. I'm telling you my experience within it. And I can tell you, I can I can absolutely tell you where I've received resistance from Gamergate. There are absolutely trolls within Gamergate. I received absolute assertions of all kinds of things from people who were hardline or Gamergaters. There are people who are extreme um, uh, of all ilk within Gamergate, who are constantly critiquing each other also. However, however, there's still a discourse happening, as opposed to with anti-Gamergate, who literally blocked me for asking the question. 
Hey, Chris, um, has there, or go ahead, Chris. Yeah, if you had something specific, yeah, go ahead. I, I was going to say, again, there's not an anti-Gamergate. And if you're referring to the block list, there's a very simple process to get whitelisted from the block list. The reason the block list exists is because Gamergate is so overwhelmingly harassive towards the people they don't like that in order for people to have a daily functional Twitter experience, they needed to not be able to see all these other people. And that is the truth. You can look at any of the, the hashtags that Gamergate has taken over. They blew up GDC. They recently just blew up the, uh, the ethics and journalism tap. Uh, ethics and journalism hashtag that was going on for the SPJ. Um, they they post gore porn. They post regular porn when they know people probably don't want to see that. They're there to have technical discussions. I mean, if you're an engineer and you're discussing with another engineer a technical issue, what would you think if someone or a big group of someone's come in and start posting 9/11 imagery or pictures of dead bodies or hentai or sexual encounters? Is that an appropriate forum for that to happen? Because that's what Gamergate does, multiple times. Again, proof of that. Firstly, and secondly, <laughs> it's, it's, and it's secondly, all over Twitter. <laughs> excuse me. Let me talk. Proof of that. It, no. It, and by the way, Twitter is a public forum. So anytime you you have a conversation on a public forum, you are opening yourself up to conversation with others. That's what Twitter is for. If I wanted to have a specialized engineering conversation about tribology or cryogenics, I wouldn't do it on Twitter. Okay. So, so, so I think I think we're seeing where there may be an unbridgeable gap on this particular uh, aspect to the conversation. What I would love to do with both of you, since since we have about ten minutes or so left, is take everything we've discussed and say. If we could just wind this thing down so that we can de-escalate what's happening with Gamergate, whatever proportion of the harassment or doxing either of you assign to to any particular group, let's say the the main goal is just a pragmatic wind down of what's escalated over over the last uh, the entire time we've been talking about this. Mercedes to you first. What do you think are the non-negotiables that need to happen for a wind down? Well, I actually think that um, Gamergate uh, kind of achieved its goals already. So, I mean, in terms of ethics and gaming journalism, you know, all these different sites revised their, um, their uh, you know, terms of service and their, their ethics uh, standards of conduct. And I think that in that, uh, it's been a success. And I think that it's time for it to wind down. A lot of the... Uh, people who've really been involved in Gamergate for the ethics and gaming journalism aspect from the beginning have said, hey, you know, I think we've we've achieved a lot and it's kind of a watchdog group at this point. And quite frankly, like I've said, I mean, I think if the quote unquote anti gamergators um, were more willing to just kind of let it go, it would die down. But calling in bomb threats to social gatherings does not facilitate uh, helping to, to wind this down. Chris, what do you think? First on the idea that Gamergate has, has achieved its goals and then as to what you would need to see in order to, to, to say, I'm comfortable with a kind of de-escalation here. Uh, first off, I would like to say to repeat Mercedes from earlier, you'll have to provide facts on that. And as far as any anti-Gamergate being the one behind the bomb threat, that's the whole point of this is you have facts to back up your arguments. As far as the actual things, I agree with you. Gamergate should be wound down. Gamergate should, if, if you feel that they have accomplished their goal of ethics in game journalism, that sites have gotten these, these new guidelines and that they're going to behave ethically, I think that is a perfectly valid thing and let's let Gamergate disappear. The unfortunate reality is, is that people are still getting targeted. Zoe Quinn still cannot return to her home. Brianna Wu still gets hundreds of hateful messages every day. Anita Sarkeesian gets hundreds of hateful messages every day. And if Gamergate wants to be about ethics and video game journalism, and this is something I've been saying since October, the only way you're going to do that is to have a group that is accountable, that has methods of keeping itself accountable, that means you need to have a member list. You need to have, to have a way to contact people. You need to have a way to meet up in real life. And I see you shaking your head, but that's the truth. If you don't have accountability, your group is defined by the actions of everyone in it because you can't say otherwise. You can't say, oh, well, this part of Gamergate's okay and we really didn't do that. You have no way of knowing which people are doing that. It's an amorphous hashtag. That's what Gamergate has always said. That's what you said. You said it's an online hashtag. That's, that's all it is. There is no accountability in an online hashtag. So 
if you want this to actually be about ethics and game journalism, there has to be accountability. That is a fact of the real world. Otherwise, the same stuff's going to continue happening. Mercedes, I saw you shaking your head in part when Chris was saying that uh, Brianna Wu and Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn were still on the receiving end of significant amounts of harassment. Did, did you, what was, were you shaking your head because you don't believe that that's true or you don't think it's germane to the discussion of a wind down? I don't think that it has anything to do with Gamergate, the hashtag. And in fact, uh, Professor Flores did a, a really great statistical analysis of the harassment that Anita Sarkeesian was receiving. And so, you know, he took a look at it and he found out of the harassment that she received in some finite period of time, 15% of those harassers had used the Gamergate hashtag, but only two of them, uh, two percent of them, had used that Gamergate hashtag as an ongoing thing. So again, it's a hashtag, not a group, not a movement. I don't think it needs to become a group or a movement. And and so to try to you know say, well, it needs to go away, therefore it needs to become more organized, doesn't make any sense to me. To me, if if people really uh, oppose it in total, then they should be glad to just leave it alone. And let it die out. I and by the way, all of this talk about harassment online, women and Gamer Brigade is doing this, and et cetera, et cetera. As a woman who's a public figure, I'll tell you, I receive harassment too. The difference is that that I don't use it as a leverage point for some other politicization, and that's the truth. And I'm sure, David, you receive harassment as well. Anybody who's a public figure receives it, and I think that when we focus too much on that. And, 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 you know, we start conflating one with the other, we get into dangerous territory. And this is why a lot of people in Gamergate are concerned about censorship. And this is, that's, that's part of why this is ongoing. Because as long as it's a conversation about harassment, then it's a push towards censorship. Well, see, it's interesting you say that because I'm a public figure as well. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And I can promise you the stuff that Gamergate is doing is so far beyond what people get on a normal everyday basis that it is I, – I spoke out on same-sex equality, okay, in Minnesota, and I had hundreds of letters from people disagreeing with me, many times in small, single-spaced print. And they were not nearly a tenth as vile as what Gamergate supporters have sent me on a daily basis. That's I have interesting. Never so, Chris, what, what, you're, what, what you're saying is when you were on the Vikings, when mm -hmm. you were a football player on the Vikings, and you yep. very, got a lot of attention when you spoke out uh, in favor of gay rights, mm -hmm. positive and negative attention, as I recall, yep. you would be on the receiving end of some anti gay bigotry. But you're saying that even though at the time you were sort of uh, uh, operating at a national level playing football, that compared to. From, from your involvement in Gamergate, it, the harassment paled in comparison. That's what you're saying. Correct. And I have the entire box of letters of everything that I was sent because I, and I enjoy reading some of them sometimes because some of them are pretty funny. But looking at those letters and then looking at tweets people have sent me, comments people have made, there is no comparison. Gamergate is by far worse than the... I mean, and, and let's be clear, we're talking about the anti-gay faction of America who not really known for their, their nice habits. Gamergate is worse than them. And I have that as a, a factual evidence. I, I have the letters from both sides. Mercedes, would you say Chris's experience is anecdotal or representative of something broader? I, I believe that it's, that it's his experience solely. I also, as a porn actress, can tell you that the harassment that I receive as a porn actress is worse than anything I've seen coming on either side of Gamergate. Hmm. And that's but isn't the that truth. anecdotal? You just said mine was anecdotal. A a How come exactly. yours is anecdotal? Exactly. And that's why I'm rebutting your anecdotal evidence with my own. All right. So, well, so we have so evidence of that. Do you actual? Do you have the actual letters of? of I stuff do. That I have emails. I have. You, you should see some of the really horrific stuff that gets written to porn actresses. Yeah, I don't doubt it. I mean, I think right. that we're, the key <laughs> point is that Chris's experience is that the Gamergate-related harassment has been worse than his non-Gamergate-related harassment. For Mercedes, the Gamergate-related stuff does not seem to have been nearly as bad as what she's experienced from other walks of life. But I don't know that that will necessarily guide us in any particular direction moving forward. Would it? Would it, Mercedes? I Again, I mean, and this is, again, we're talking about anonymity on the internet. So part of it is when people send you an email, um, there's, a, there's a stamp on it, right? So you're able to kind of trace back who that is. Online with anonymity, you have a situation where um, you, these are people who can really be vile because you, 
they are anonymous. And I think that that's part of why this has become such a toxic conversation in total. So to, go ahead, Chris. That, yeah, last thing. Would you say then that an amorphous hashtag that has no accountability would give rise to that same environment? I think that the internet gives rise to that environment and all of the things that happen within it. And I don't think it's a hashtag's fault. I think that this is just the internet. Let's, if we can, what do we all agree on? You both did agree that harassment and doxing has taken place. You've both agreed that to differing degrees, there are people out there who truly are most concerned about ethics and game journalism. And it sounds like in different ways, you've both agreed that there should be a wind down to Gamergate, albeit for drastically different reasons. Chris, am I missing any other key elements of agreement that you two have had? No, I, th I think that about covers it. I, I think the main reason that me and many others oppose Gamergate is not because of the idea of ethics and video game journalism. It's because of the factual evidence that people have been harassed over this. And until that stops, then we, I'm, I'm not going to stop speaking out against it because these are people's lives we're talking about. I mean, the, these are people who are being negatively affected by this. And I don't think that that is a thing that we should accept from ourselves as a society. All right, Mercedes, Chris had the first word at the beginning mm -hmm. of this conversation. I'll give you the last word. What will, what would it take for you to remove yourself? We've heard from Chris what it would take for him to stop speaking out. What would it take for you to stop speaking out on this? Well, I, I think if Gamergate was to change its aims and stop being about ethics and, and really uh, stop being a, a stand against censorship, then I definitely would not align myself with it. But as of right now, and from, from what I've seen, Gamergate, the hashtag stands for ethics and gaming journalism, accountability, as well as a stand against censorship and authoritarians. All right. Well, certainly not 100% agreement on that last comment. That we can say for sure. We've been <laughs> speaking with Chris Cluey, who disagrees, and Mercedes Carrera, who disagrees with a lot of what Chris has said. It's been a very interesting conversation. Thanks to both of you for being Thank here today. You. Thanks for having Thank me. You, David.